Jesus. Mighty name we worship. In Jesus, mighty name. Amen. My heart is born in my eyes is watching to see your beauty, to see your glory, to see your power today. My heart is burning. My eyes are watching to see your beauty. To see your glory, to see your power today. My heart is burning, my eyes are watching to see your beauty, to see your power. To see your glory today. I'm tired of besetting sin. I'm tired of fornication. I'm tired of adultery. I want to give it up today. My heart is burning. My eyes are watching. There is something I want to see. Not a damn cell. Not the figure and the shape of a woman. I want to see the beauty. I want to see the glory. And I want to see your power today. My heart is burning. My eyes are watching. So that I can see your beauty. I can see your glory and touch your power today what are you hungry for what is drawing you what is pulling you this morning there is a need for consecration there is a need for a generation to be consecrated Men and women that will pledge their allegiance to another flag and they will dance to another drum beat that play from the side of the north. Go raise me a people, raise me a remnant. That remnant must not be found in the laps of Delilah, nor in the romance of Sheba. They must be found within the quiver of the father. And therefore tonight we are crying Purge my vessel Purge my vessel Dear Lord Take away the drawers from the silver Take away the drawers from the silver The Lord Tonight I cry in the name of Jesus Purify my vessel Purify my vessel Purify my vessel I come today and I give to you my body. My body is your sanctuary. My body is your temple. My body is your host. My body is your temple. Purify me like gold so that I might be bold to say my own body is your sanctuary every debris and impurity in my spirit in my soul and in my body sanctify today whoa holy sanctify completely rescue me deliver me from the filthiness of the spirit 
and of the body deliver me tonight from the from the filthiness of the spirit and of the body i come today for a body have you prepared is your body prepared is your body prepared a body that must host him must be prepared your body must look away and look onto a body that we have that access must look away and look onto a body prepare my soul prepare my spirit and prepare my body sanctify me I don't want to masturbate anymore I don't want to deplete the energies of heaven I don't want to deplete divine supplies and I don't want to abuse grace help me Lord I cry to you I'm a generation and I am dying help me father is that somebody's cry this morning a cry of sincerity a cry of truth and desire to play the host in on earth the temple the building the craftings of God my heart is burning this morning my eyes are watching not to behold the beauty of a damsel but to behold the beauty of the Lord and when I behold his beauty I will see his glory and when I see his glory I will manifest his power in Jesus mighty name we pray you know yesterday when our father was talking to us he said something about the life of Moses Moses chose to suffer you know why he chose to suffer because he wanted to see the invincible how can you see the invincible if you don't hear the inaudible? How can you walk with the invincible when you don't touch the intangible? You must begin to run. God is as real as he's invincible. And so many people in our generation today, so many people, so many people have been battered by sex. as a corporate people as an individual we come in we speak some are captured and caught and tied down within the forces of incest you know I went to minister somewhere and I spoke on sexual purity papa and when I was done the lady said to me you are a small boy you don't know what you are talking about after I finished talking about sexual purity and when she was talking, I was older than her actually in age. It's obvious. We don't, I didn't need to tell her. But when she said I was, sm I, I was a small boy, I wondered what was this girl talking about. Then I listened to her, patiently listened to her. And she said, this message you brought today, God was judging me, but you have no idea what you're talking about. I'm in love with my father. Not my spiritual father, my biological father. We've been sleeping together he impregnated me and took me to the hospital where it was aborted I said alright I think that is not a big news until she said that now I feel like killing him because he has gone to get another woman for himself I love my father so much I cannot do without him I was in 300 level on the campus when that happened you know what I told her when she finished I said I'm a small boy I said I'm a small boy up until that time I'd watched it in Nigeria movie I'd not seen it in real life so God gave me wisdom and grace to begin to rehabilitate her not a psychological rehabilitation but spirit rehabilitation I began to expose her to the word of God I began to expose her to the word of God to the glory of God she's married today 
I began to expose her and began to let her know that this thing is possible. Permit me to start by telling you that there's an anomality among us such that the virgins among us are beginning to feel and look at themselves and say, am I okay? When you turn to the left, you see Barak Kenneth sleeping with Sister Lagbaja. When you turn to the front, you see Pastor Obina sleeping with Auntie Mary. When you turn to the back, you see Prophet sleeping with a prophetess. Everywhere you turn to is beginning to look as though this is a normal thing. Grace cannot overcome it. We live in a life in a, in a, we live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a season where sexual sin is becoming a normal thing in our midst. And ladies and gentlemen, that is not the will of God, number one. Number two, I want to say to you that there are many virgins. I want to say to you, virginity is possible. Let me go to Songs of Solomon chapter 8 from verse 8. There are many virgins in the land. There are still many virgins in the land. I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But in the next one hour plus, I want us to dig deep in prayer. Peradventure you are here, you have lost or lost your virginity. There's no problem. I lost mine at the age of seven because I was sexually abused. And I was active from the age of seven until 19. You cannot count how many people are defiled and how many people defiled me. But I'm standing today. I'm standing today. And there are three ruling principles I want you to imbibe. I don't know the title of the message, but you are going to look for it. Number one, the righteous man. The righteous man. I'm not putting it in any particular order. Must be strict to himself. Somebody says strict to himself. As a righteous person, where's my wife? Sweetheart, please come. Come on. I want to use you as practical this morning. I can do anything. Save one. The righteous man must be strict to himself. The righteous man must be secretly pure. The righteous man must be mercifully kind to others. What's the title of the message? It's in one of the messages the apostle preached. Huh? Huh? Okay, the designing the movement of the inner man. Whichever one, look for that message. Today, you as a brother, you know your challenge. You know that before you came into the kingdom, you are no longer a wall, you are a door. You know what a door is? We have a little sister, and she had no breast. Maturity had not developed here. She doesn't have the desire for sex yet but they are beginning to ask we have a sister she had no breast what shall we do for our sister in the day where she shall be spoken for in the day where you see the lady and she's fully mature this place is talking about the body of Christ it's talking about the lover the day the lover will come and he will ask for her. What shall be said about her? There are two possibilities that will be said. Possibility number one. If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. If she have not been penetrated upon, we are going to build on her the palace of silver. There is a building that God wants to build. That building is called a palace of silver. How many of you know the temple? How many of you know the tabernacle? We have the outer court. We have what? We have what? And then we have what? That is how a woman is. But I will not go into that today because we have children here. 
I would have shown you that the only way to go into the chambers of the woman, you must break the first chamber. You must come through the first chamber. And the second chamber that is the hymen, you will break it to be able to go into her. That is when you consummate intimacy. And that is why if you look at the old rendition of the Bible, if you take your phone and you go to Old King James, not NLT, Old King James, and you type the word sex, you will not see the word sex. Because God never intended that we should have sex. God intended that we should have intimacy. So from marriage, you know marriage is a mystery. From marriage, God began to exemplify what it means to have a mystery. Because he said, I speak about Christ and this is great mystery. So every time you engage in sexual interactions, you are actually engaging in intimacy. So the Bible said, Adam knew his wife. The Bible didn't say Adam had sex. Because it's an interaction. If your wife knows you so much and she understands the interaction, if you touch another damn cell and you come to touch her, she will know. Because it's an interaction. If she be a war, we will build upon a palace of silver. I want to ask all the ladies in the house who are still wall, you are heading for the palace. I want to talk to all the brothers in our midst this morning. If you still a, if you are still a wall, there is a place waiting for you. Please keep your virginity. You cannot afford it. I see some funny teachings on fornication going about in 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 on the face on 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 Facebook. Where a man said, "If you are a Christian, if you say you are having sexual dream, that means you are not a Christian. The immortals are not talking to you." Listen, it is possible to be a Christian, to be a pastor, and still be harassed with sexual dreams. It is not because you are not spiritual. It is because there is a legal ground for that operation. It happened to me for more than 10 years. Sexually abused. From the age of 7, I was no longer a wall. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with what? I'd like you to take a journey to the book of First Kings chapter 7 when you go home. And read about the temple. And read about the materials that God used in constructing the holies of holies. The chambers. It will take a chamber to break another chamber. When you go into that, you begin to see how God began to bring the cedar. You know where they bring cedar? All the way from Thai. Zidon in Thai. That is where cedar will be trafficked into Jerusalem. Where the temple will be erected. That material was not sourced in the house of God. It was sourced from the Eden generation. And they began to bring cedar. If you have been broken, you, we are told. If you have become a war, a door, we are told that we should build an embankment around you. And that embankment must be birds of what? Cedar. And when I went to study cedar, I saw that one of the things that was used to decorate the pillar was cedar. God will use cedar to decorate the pillars so that when you come out that is why I said my wife should come. I didn't marry a virgin. I didn't marry a virgin. I married a woman who was a what? A wall. But if I look at her today and you look at me is there a word written on my head called virginity? Answer me. Is there a word on her head written virginity? No. No. It's in the glory of knowing that you know if I'm a virgin or not. But today in our midst, we are turning the, the walls. We are deliberately turning the walls into door. Sexual exploitation of our members. Sexual exploitation of, of the vulnerable people. 
you want to counsel a lady you want her to tell you how she was having sex okay so what happened yeah when he touched you what happened uh, then he touched my teeth uh, then you stupid young man your your leg is getting swollen as she's talking you are you continue your leg is getting full you want the details you don't know that you are in trouble if she is a wall we must build an embankment we must we must we must build upon her a palace silver take note of the word build because building is not spiritual building is intentional you 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 give yourself to the process that this is what i want to build so can I say to you this morning if you are a wall you are a product of your building if you are a door you are a product of your building you will build that wall and there are three kind of sexual activities I want to tell you this morning one of it is in house sex somebody say in house that is the type that Paul was taking to us about that I hear there is fornication in your midst I hear by the hearing of the ear. I am not around. But this news has gone wild. The Corinthian church was a church that was blazed in fire. Laced with grace. Every spiritual gift that you can imagine was there. They prophesied with their eyes open. They prophesied with their eyes closed. They gave word of knowledge. Before you did all these things, the Corinthian church did it. All this word of knowledge that you are basking for. That you want to see apostle, I say, Papa, there was great output a flow of, of, of word of knowledge. But when we look at you, you are not righteously pure. And then some of us today, I don't know where you heard that message from. I don't know who taught you that message. You tell them, I cannot sin because my body. You say your body is the temple of the Lord. Then you finish sleeping with the lady. Then you say, speak in tongues. Babe, you can speak in tongues, right? Can you give me some tongues? <laughs> and then you will now tell her, you see the Holy Spirit is still there. The Holy Ghost is still there. You are no longer building a wall. You are turning, you are, you are not longer opening the door. You are turning the door into a well. You are stirring up her fountain. That was meant to be kept. Most of you looking at me are trapped in these things. Some of you trapped with pastors who no longer have control. In house sex, in house, in house, where the pastor will catch the vulnerable ones, and where the ladies will seduce the pastor. Where members have no, no more respect for their body and have no more regard for their body. There is something going on. There, there is something going on in our midst. I don't understand why a sister, born again child of God, I'm not against nails. See. But you will see on the hand of a sister, red, blue, green, yellow, white, on five fingers. Are you a witch? Some of you wear these eyelashes that we cannot look at you and talk when you are talking. There is no difference between a believer lady and a prostitute. This is not the order. This was not what we received from our mothers. This was not what we were taught. And then you will find a man that will be consumed with a woman. And then his friend will ask him, what is your problem? He said, I am in love. With who? With my brother's sister. What is her name? He said, I am in love with my brother's sister. Tama. Absalom's sister. He said, wow. You know the reason why we open the... You know the reason why we break the wall? Is because we no longer see them as our sisters. We see them as a brother's sister. But when the king came in, Papa, he said to the king, please tell my sister. Somebody say, tell my sister. When he wanted to take advantage of her, she was not the, his sister. She was not 
the, his own sister. She was Pastor Abe's sister. So when Pastor Abe's sister comes into church, she's no longer Pastor Austin's sister. Because, God forbid, not my portion. Because Pastor Gabriel wants to flow. No longer sister Mama has a sister. But because he wanted to get her, he played the card before his father. He said, let my sister come. But before the brethren and in his heart, there was the candle of sincerity will always reveal itself. She was not his sister. She was a sex tool. In a house. Taking advantage of herself. Playing around the vulnerability of ourselves. But alas, there's another example. That this thing can be done normally. Even in a house. God can take us away from sin. God can take us away from the filthiness of the body. God can deal with that matter. And I dare say to you, it is possible to be holy. It is possible to live without sex. I want to draw me to the body of Christ. That the examples you see today are not the examples. The people you see today, and you want to run after them, and you tell them, say, sleep with me. Because Pastor Lagbaja is doing it, and the grace of God is flowing. It is a matter of time. A Delilah is coming that he cannot wake up from. He will say, now we rise up as I used to. Then he will find out that there is no more anointing. What is remaining is that Delilah has folded his ministry like a mat and placed it on his hand and asked him to go and be tied to a pillar because the day of reckoning is coming that you will understand that your body is not yours. Your body is the temple of God. You know what a temple is? A temple is a host. A temple is a host that stands stands in between two great divide. The spirit world and the physical world. So in between you have a temple. What is the duty of the temple in between? The ability and the capacity to receive, to retain, and to express. And the only way you know that the temple is accurate is when the temple is complete. You do not need to shout. The glory will come. In-house. So... We now have in-house, in-house movements. See that come. A lady will come to your office and say, Pastor, I have trouble. I have issues. My husband is giving me problems. Pastor, I'm dying. And then you say to her, Come, come now. Are you afraid? Say to her, Come, sweetheart. It's okay. Okay. You are ministering to another man's wife and you are telling her it's okay in your office you are hugging her her breast is touching you everything about her body is touching you then you are rubbing her and you are saying it's okay it's okay you don't know that you are about to open a door it's okay your trouser is getting up you are getting into trouble it's okay it's okay. Then before you know, you stray to where you shouldn't stray. Listen to me. There is no body that falls into the scene of fornication that didn't have a room of escape. Nobody. Nobody. In this same convergence, people meet me here. Some will say, I have issues with my private part. Women, sisters. As they are talking, I say, wait. Pastor Grace! I'll hold the lady and I'll put her in the hands of my wife. She said she's having issues with her private part. This one I said, as in, I said it politely. This is not how they say it. They call the name of that place. In this convergence where we are. And then, you as a dog, will now say, this is an advantage. This is another killer. So you will pray like Judah stealing women in the night but a day will come that your staff and your signet ring will be seized please stand with me I went to bed 
at about 3 a.m. this morning. I had to pray. So in-house, you deal with them. So I said, Lord, if there is an in-house sex, you must give me an example of another in-house where sex will not be taken. Where you will look at a woman, you will not take advantage of her. Where you will look at a pastor, you will not take advantage of him. Oh, lady. You will not use your gift to smear him. You will not use your beauty to slap him. All you are going to do, you are going to behave like that woman who will come to Jesus and the glory of a woman is her hair and she will bury it at the feet of Jesus. That was what she did. That everything that I am, beyond the perfumery, now it is me. Beyond my gift, now it is me. I gave you my perfume. I gave you that costly fragrance. But what I want to give you now is no longer the fragrance. A fragrance is a typology of the, the brokenness of my heart. So that unless a seed falls to the ground and die, it abides alone. I'm not only going to practice it or demonstrate it as a typology with the fragrance that you gave to me. I'm now going to practice it with my life. I will pour the perfume on you and I will use my hair to rub it. How many of you are if a woman comes, you know this, they are long hair these days. You know when they want to pray or something, they do like this. How many of you can a woman slap with that hair three, four, five times and you will still be intact? Not Jesus. Jesus was there watching her. Intact. And Jesus did that as what? According to the teaching of yesterday. As what? An example that it is possible. That's one. Number two, Ruth chapter three. Boaz was drunk. Somebody say drunk. Filled with wine and excitement and he slept. He did not know that the damsel was with him in the afternoon. He did not know that the damsel was with him in the evening. The Bible says at midnight. It was at midnight. Ruth chapter three from verse seven. It was at midnight. He felt the leg of a damsel. That principle of collision. Colliding was taking place and he said who is this person this lady entered into his room but there are two interplays going on there you will see a woman that was mentored and you will see a man that is disciplined many of you are Delilah's because you don't submit yourself to mentoring when a root when, 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 when a Naomi is talking to you, you think a Naomi is controlling you. But you don't know that a Naomi is just set in your life so that you can be built for days like this. For a day like this when you will meet with the king. You remember what Tamar said to him? He said, why do you want to do this with me? Ask for the king and he will give you, he will give me to you for the king all I did to marry this woman was to ask for the king all I did was to ask from the king all I did for some time and the day God was going to give me my wife I was not praying about her I was not praying for her I was praying interceding about the nations of the world when God said she's the one she's the one and I said who is she's the one he said Ebolua is your wife Are you a wall today or you are a door? And Boaz touched the lady. That was not the time for agro to be formed. That was not the time for the testosterone to be high. That was rather the time to bless her. Not in sex. Not taking advantage of the vulnerable. But I just say to you, this is not the root that came from the ancient land. This is a root that has been mentored by Naomi. She has taught her the craft of discipline. She has taught her that even though now you are a door, because as at this time she was married to her son before, even though now you are a door, come to my house. And you know why? She said, my God is your God. Your people are my people. Since you want to follow my God, oh root, I'm going to train you. 
I'm going to teach you how to become a virtuous woman such that when the king sees you in the middle of the night and he taps you, he will know that you are a woman worth waiting for. And so you see the interplay between Tama. Immediately the drama happened with Tama. I said, take Listen to me. When Tama came, she was a sister. When Tama came, she was a sister. When Tama left, she was a woman. He said, now take this woman away from me. What a transition. You know who a woman is? You are a sister until you are married. But right now, so many of you are no longer sisters. You are women. Take this woman and bolt the door behind that is what happens to you every time you lost after a man from sisterhood to womanhood in the split second i'll be 10 years married on may 23 i met this lady a sister she is now a woman out of her body i've milked out three children by the help of the lord i mixed them out And every time she goes to work, now she's my door. But yet, even though she's my door, as my wife, she must build cedars of wood around her. Because I know of me, I know of brothers who the only thing they like is married women. The day I catch you, you will be blinded. <laughs> Some is heavy pregnant women in Abuja. They drive about looking for pregnant women. Is it possible? He looked at her and he did what? He blessed her. Not by kissing, not by smooshing, but by releasing the blessedness of the father. And when he was going to ask for her, Papa, he asked for her at the gate. He asked for this lady's hand in marriage at the gate he said i will buy you back i will redeem you everything that is needed i will pay for how many of you can wait for that day where god will purchase you you know some of you are living in 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 this ecstasy of let there be no rapture what the men are eating and the women me self i want to be a part of it so for you right now what is doing you for rapture not to come is that you want to have carnal knowledge <laughs> a day we come in marriage a day we come that you will if i put your hand remove it because you've done it before that you will touch her like this do it oh let them see. do it now you say i'm tired you will come again you come again then you will say what is it she says sweetheart baby not today not today i'm tired and tomorrow then you will understand that marriage does not cure sex That is the day you begin to understand in a moment that there is a woman beside you. You are not wearing trousers because you are in your house. You are all erected. The woman is saying, see, don't touch. That is valuable marriage. Oh. Legal marriage. Now, if you don't have that discipline, if you have not built that discipline of see, don't touch, tomorrow she will go to work. And then you wear your trousers. You will go and pick Delilah like something who has no control. The Bible says he saw an harlot on the street and he entered into he went into her. But no boas. No boas. Boas tapped her in the middle of the night. You know, those days no electricity was candle. You must be righteously strict to yourself. You know that before you came, my wife is here. Ask her, give, give her the mic and ask. On campus, I didn't hug anybody full hug. Yeah. In our relationship, we never hugged full, did we? We only did once. And that was after God spoke to me that she's my wife. And she came, and that was a great day of proposal. A great day. Somebody said a great day of proposal. So she came to my room. and I, Not in my room, self. I didn't hug her in the room. I hugged her. I can never forget that hug. Hugged her in front of the door. I said, I hugged. Then I stroked her back. One, two, three. <laughs> that is what some of you do. You 
do it constantly. You know, when our apostle was in school, his friends were doing those kind of things. I remember that message, one of the message, and he said things. He said, "They said to him, why are you too spiritual? You are too strict." He said, "We shall compare not in five years. If I am correct, we will know. If this your way is okay, it's okay." You, they don't even you when you see them, they don't do you like this. Oh. You, the brother, you are the one doing like this. You want to hug and hug and hug until you hug out your life. You say, I see Pastor Christian I kill him and say, Oh, glory to God. Come over here, come over here, come here, come here. And then he hugs. Me, my want to hug. When you are not no longer a wall, you are a door. Our fathers don't have the knowledge we have in this generation. But we don't have the power they had. What is the difference? What is the difference? Is in what I'm sharing with you. When they say it shall rain, it will rain. They will not say who is talking. They will just say, Babalola have spoken. Let the rain come. But if you, you talk like sons of Skiba, they will say, who are you? I want to challenge each and every one of us today that it is possible to be a virgin. There are plenty. My point number two yield your body as instruments of righteousness, not unrighteousness. Your members, when I was coming up, I had so many challenges in this area, Papa. Not with sleeping around. No, I didn't sleep around when I gave my life to Christ. But I had so many bad dreams that dealt with me. It's as though I'm having sex physically. They will do all of that until one day I was in my room and the word came. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, you know, you say bodies, unto the Lord as a living sacrifice which is your reasonable service. I took the word bodies. I went to my room. I said, Lord, I give you my hand. I give, you said bodies, so I just interpreted it as part of the bodies. So I said, Lord, I give you my hand. I give you my leg. I give you my private part. I began to pray that prayer for months. It was when I began to pray that prayer that one day I had not gone to 1 Corinthians 7 and 2 Corinthians 7. One day God said to me, begin to begin to read your spirit from the spirit of the woman you slept with. And then I will say, my mom is at the side of the door in my room. And I will say, the spirit of Lami, leave me alone. Every sexual inter- intercourse I've had with you. Today I'm a new man. God has granted me grace. I'm no longer an old man. Every legal ground I, be- I break. Some of you will need to go that route. You will need to do that homework. Don't come and tell Apostle Arame after meeting. I used to have sex in my dream. Use that sex in your dream to grow. Use it to grow. Use it to build your prayer life. Use it to build your spiritual life. Use it to build capacity. He became my measuring stick for personal revival. I didn't know that was what it was until I listened to your message. But I remember every time I begin to see that funny dream. I say, Kai, I've not been praying enough. My wife knows. Am I lying? I tell her. Even in marriage, you must not lose your candle of sincerity, my brother. I will tell her, sweetheart, this funny dream is coming again in marriage. In marriage. Then I will wake up. Peranadesa. It became a measuring stick for how revived I am in God. It became a way for me to know if I'm alive in the spirit. Because that thing we want to pull me. Then I will say, no, 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 no. The only way not to go back because I can't afford it. The only way not to run into it. And say it's just a dream. It's not a dream man. A virtue is going out of you. Because most of the time when it happens. It's difficult for me to stand from the bed. I'm weak. And I dare not do a transaction. Because it will blow up. But the immortal teachers. Will tell you that. It's because he doesn't know God. Build. Build. Begin 
to build. Rise up and say to sex in the dream, I'm going to use you to grow and watch and see how the devil will go backward right before your eyes. And every time it begins to come, don't feel less spiritual. Just say, Kai, I am becoming warm. I'm becoming lukewarm. Let me rise up. Then I dust my feet again. Then I fast and I pray. But now it's all gone. You know why? Because I used my pain as a treasure to grow. The devil no longer had the opportunity to use it against me. I rather turned it around and used it against him. That every time this thing is coming, it's not because I'm a sinner. It's because I am not revived. I begin to cry and I begin to pray, yielding my bodies to God. How many of you here are doors? You may not be a wall, but you can build an embankment. By being righteously strict to yourself. By having an accountability partner. I have a friend here that I talk to. Talks to me. I have a father that I can call. Say, Papa. I can tell him. My eyes are strained. Every time I look at the billboard, I don't see the close-up. I see the chest of the lady. And some of you here are in those battles but you will watch Game of Thrones. You will watch Troy. Well, what is your kind of movie? Ah, man. I love I love adventurous movies. Actually, the adventure you are looking for is not adventure. You are looking for sex drive. Some of you here, the Lord is telling me you have sex toys at home. Go and, go and burn them down when you go back. There are two ladies here who have sex toys at home. As I talk to you now, go back home and destroy those things. So in-house sex, it's possible for us to live as brethren and see ourselves as brothers and sister. You know why? Naomi taught Ruth. Ruth demonstrated it at midnight. Not during the day. Your own is during the day you fall. But she went in at midnight and came back. Midnight! For the night comet. Wherein no man can walk. But it's in that same night. That Naomi gave herself. To Ruth. And built Ruth. You must have ladies who are examples and mentors around you. I didn't have a father, biological father that was an example. I taught my father how to love my mother. I taught him when I gave my life to Christ. You don't talk to a lady like this. But even in the midst of teaching him, there are times I talk to my wife. I know that it is not Austin talking. It is the old Upore. When I talk, I'll say, this is my father talking. But I will not tell her, don't keep it to myself. This is not me. Which examples are you following? Don't self self destruct because they tell you that a pastor is sleeping with women and then you find out and then you begin to go on that tangent. One of our friends was looking to receive impartation from a pastor. He paid for the hotel for the man, did everything and he told the people, when the pastor leaves, don't clean the room because he wants to receive what? Impartation. Then he came. He didn't do anything. He just dived on the bed. This is one of the strongest men in the South South that you think then he dived on the bed as he was praying. Shaka, ba, 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 ba. His hand traveled and then he touched fluid. <laughs> What's going on here? He stood up. What is going on here? He saw all manner of drugs he had never seen. Sex enhancer drugs. He moved further. He saw condoms. That man is a dog. He's a strong man. And when he was coming to that hotel, he said he was coming for revival. Eh, retreat. He's going to retreat with the Lord. Somebody say retreat. Yeah, he actually did. And then he, he come and he will say, somebody say fire. Then you always say fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he just came from the lap 
of who? Hey, Delilah. Because now, you can see that what was happening to Samson was becoming a lifestyle. No restriction. He went to the street and he caught her and her lot and he went in, right in to her. He broke the secretary of the temple. He went from the outer court to the inner court and to the holies of holies. The moment you break the chamber, you go in there. And that is where intimacy is consummated. Can I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, I say this with all sense of responsibility. I know that Paul said, it is better to marry than to born. But I want to say to you, even in marriage, you will born. That marriage will not secure that issue of bonding. A day will come that your wife is not around, that you will born. And I want to warn every young man here that is trusting God for an international ministry. The international ministry is not what you do by just confessing to your people. I see myself preaching in Canada. I see myself preaching in Yola. Glory to God. I see myself going to the United States. Some of you, you went to United States intact. You came back battered. Your undoing was that you began international ministry. Baba Adiboye was going to preach. This is a open forum. It's, a, it's an open testimony in the world. And then the wife said, I want to rest. I don't want to go with you. You know, he said, my dear, rest. She said, okay. But there was a staring in her inside. And she said, I wanted, she wanted to go. And then she traveled with him. Unknown to him. There was a preparation for scandal. That if they knock the door, he should open. And when he opens the door, they should just grab him and they will snap pictures. That is not even entering the woman. You know when you see the picture? That would be all. You know that was, it was, that was the principle that affected Benny Hinn. That Benny Hinn was coming out of the hotel and he was holding Paula White. And they snapped. It was that picture that the wife saw and said, you have been starving me of this kind of fellowship that I want. You are doing this with Paula White? Not that they had sex, so. Me, your wife, you leave me. I release you to travel around the world. I starve for fellowship. You are holding the hand of a woman and laughing out of the hotel. They snapped. Permit me to tell you truth today. Truth, truth. And I'm speaking truth to power in the body of Christ. That everyone, you don't know the damage that is going on within the youth because of examples bad examples and because you want to use the bad examples to begin to steal water and to begin to stare fountains that you are not supposed to stare it, in the beginning it was not so and then they knocked Baba Adibu Edni opened the door Papa guess who did it was the wife and the man was seated and when she opened she saw all manner of standing breast because they wanted to hug him and then they will snap. It's been long I heard that message. I used to have the cassette. I have Kumuyi's on too. Where Pastor Kumuyi said he traveled. His own was more dramatic. Because when he opened the door, the lady was standing. And he said, in Jesus' name, what is this? The power of God lifted the woman and drew her to the wall. And she stood up and she ran. Men that are disciplined. Men that will not say my wife is not here. Let me flow. Men that will not say my father apostle is not here. Let me touch the accosting. Let me travel. But I want to say to you today with all sense of responsibility that if there is any of you here wallowing in sin and in fornication and in adultery, that is not the end. The end is that you should give it up. Judas, when he was caught, when the lady said, the owner of these things is by the hands of whom I have committed this act. You know what his, his statement was? Yes, it is true. She is more righteous than I am. And then the next scripture said, and Judah stoned. Never again did he turn back from that turning. Now I will turn aside and see why this bush is burning and is not consumed. Never again did Moses ever turn anymore. Moses was not like Peter who would say, I'll now go fishing. Jesus is not around. I am talented spokesman. 
I can feel the anointing that I can wrap women. And then you go about sleeping around, losing virtue. That is why in our corporate essence, you see, in the body of Christ today, we have gallant men. Am I communicating with you? When Apostle Aramis stands here now, my father is gallant. When Reverend Gideon comes here now, he's gallant. But if you put the two of them in the midst of ten other ones, maybe four have done Roboribi. Maybe five have done Roboribi. So our corporate essence, our corporate persona, our corporate power, our corporate voice, our corporate thickness in the spirit is affected because there is a pastor that is sleeping around. There is a sister that is sleeping around. You no longer just do that. They cut eyes for themselves when the pastor is preaching. Did you see the sex tape that was flying about in Lagos? In Lekki, the issue in Lekki? How can a pastor be indulged in that and be doing video? What is going on with our generation? We lose sanctification for knowledge. They say, no problem, let's just go for knowledge. You see the word power is the word dunamis. Dunamis, dunamis. And you don't even have that power, but you want to explain it to us. For me to be able to explain dunamis, I'll need to speak in tongue. Then you hear things like this tongue I want to speak is a, is a z- zibolic tongue. Zezegino, zikre zezegi. The Holy Spirit is now your mate. That you are saying you want to pray a zizelic tongue. Or you say we want to pray machine gun. Can you see? Meanwhile, you are just coming from a damn cell. Your soul is what God is after this morning. And that it is possible. Give me Jude one twenty. Give me Jude 20. It is possible. Papa, there was a man by the name Philip. He had four virgins. They were all prophetess. It is possible to be a virgin. Even in this world. I keep praying. The Lord, please keep my daughter. Keep my son. Keep me. When I was going to start ministry, as I began to follow you, you know what this woman said to me in the middle of the night? She said, I am releasing you for one thing. Don't break the trust. It may be difficult to recover. My wife doesn't talk. So when she talks, it breaks the wall. I never forget that comment. Everywhere I go, I have that utterance in my spirit. And now I release you. Don't give me room to doubt you. Don't break the trust. It may be difficult. To recover. Even recently, she woke up and told me the same thing. She said, Austin, this, I don't know if I can stand it. Please don't go there. And I said, please, you pray. But there is something I want you to kill in this meeting. You know what I want you to kill? There is this lie going on among you. I cannot fall but I cannot fall but once you put but the devil will come for you because you have given him an alternate ground that is possible to fall I cannot fall but never say never okay we indeed in your life will never say never because he will come I want men that will rise up have you ever opened your whatsapp chat and when you opened it, it was the bottom of a woman you saw that was sent to you as a picture. It has happened to somebody here. You finish praying, then you open your WhatsApp chat. You saw a woman actually did like this, snapped and sent to you. Young people, things are happening. The season's where we are. Seasons where we need men and women that will model integrity to us, that will show us that it's possible to live in Jesus and have a fulfilled life without stolen waters. Because stolen waters are, are good, sweet, not good, sweet, but when you are caught, you will repay. And you know what the Bible says? It says, when, when the devil is caught stealing, they will take from him seven. In fact, that scripture, when you, you are caught stealing with a woman, virtues are gone. 
Whether you like it or not, every time you engage in such things, something dies. Every time you engage in something, in that, something dies. He said, but ye beloved, building up, is it 20? No. Sorry. For we know, please just remain standing. Thank you for standing to preaching along with me. Where is that scripture? Please let me look for it. For God is able to. 20. 20. Go to 24. Thank you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from what? Unto him that is able to keep you from what? What will happen to you then? God is able to keep us. That's the mentality you must run with. God is able to keep me. Can you begin to pray with this scripture? Unto him that is able, if you are a dog, right now, he did not say if you are a dog, God will build a wall. He did not say it is you that will use your life, your hand to build and to construct the wood. If you are now a door, he said if she's a door, you will be the one. God will not come. That is why he said, I know here that this kind of fornication is in your midst. Such that should not be spoken of. But unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. What a joy! What a joy that you will come before the Lord. And God will be proud of you. What a joy! That the generation that is pure will rise. A pure breed. A pure people with power. A pure brother. A pure sister. A pure friend. That we will rise in the name of Jesus. And that God will keep me. 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 God will keep my wife. God will keep my children. God will keep my father. God will keep my father. God will keep my spiritual father. God will keep my friends. God will keep my covenant brothers. For God. Oh, now, now, it is now. If you are falling, now he's able to keep you. If you are falling before, now, if this scripture can come alive in you, he can keep you. Now 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 he can keep you. Now. Now he can keep you. you. Father keep me. Jesus keep me. Jesus keep me. Jesus keep me. Where are the boas? Where are the roots? Where are the roots? Don't be like David in some areas. When in the days of war, you are looking for leisure. Don't stand on the wall where you are supposed to go for war. Don't stand on the wall, oh people, where you are supposed to go for war. Don't be on the wall. That is why Elijah said, For how long will you dwell in between opinions? Where will you stand in between walls? If God be God, serve him. He have been bought with a price. You have been bought with a price. You are now no longer yours. You are Christ's. You are no longer yours. You are Christ's. He has been bought with a price. 
and therefore you must trust God that God will keep you that God will keep me and I like you to tell yourself there are many virgins I can remain a virgin there are many virgins if I am one I will remain there are many I can be part of the many cry to God God, He can keep you. God, He can keep you. Now, to Him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you. In Jesus mighty name we pray i come to say to you finally that there are still many virgins from the old testament down to the seasons where there was grace and i want to say this in closing apostle arome said grace is not something on delilah that is what your generation is teaching your body you cannot see but yet you are sleeping around and then you come back grace is not something on Delilah the definition of grace the explanation of grace the moment of grace the operations of grace is not something on Delilah but grace is the picture of Joseph and Potiphar's wife did you notice that she was called Potiphar's wife? She was called Potiphar's wife. We were not told her name. But for Samson, we were told the name. I dug that thing. I will not teach it today. Why was she not called by her name? Because in the Bible, in the book of Judges chapter 4, the Bible says she's Deborah. She's a wife. A prophetess. And she judged Israel mighty identities mighty things you can use to identify Deborah but when he came to Potiphar's wife he said Potiphar's wife Potiphar always knew that she lacked in character so he kept guards around her that was why it was easy for her to shout for the guards to come you cannot say you want to sleep with a man in the public it was in the closet but when she shouted the guards were there to come you know why she was Potiphar's wife. Potiphar knew how he got her. And he knows that the only way he can keep her from meandering, because he also got her on the streets, that the only way he can keep her is to have guards around her. But she has mastered her act before she came to that house. She knows where she can go to that the guards will not be there. But she knows how she should speak and the guards will reach out to her. You know why? Because she wears the attires of an harlot. With all the attires she wore, she could not get... Joseph. That is the definition of grace. Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God has not given our instruments as instruments of sin but he said yield them. You will be the one to yield it as instruments of righteousness and not unrighteousness. Songs of Solomon 6 8 he said there are concubines but when it was going to end there are three score queens and four score concubines. You can number these ones. You can number Delilah. You can number them. They are on the street. You can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can number them. But when he came to the virgins, what did he say? And virgins are without number. Apostle Aaron may stay chased till the end. Engaged for five years waited patiently until that day. My own story, you don't even want to hear. If I tell you my own, you will run. When I married for three days, I was still waiting. Somebody say waiting. Yes, for three days. I was a Boaz. I, I didn't allow the agro to tamper with the delicate balance of this woman. I waited for her. When I come up, people will say, Kai, Pastor Austin, nah, nah, nah. I'll just be laughing. 
They didn't know that I was born in every three days. I just come. I don't see the time. I say, are you ready now? When we want to go, I say, ah. I say, calm down. I don't want you to have a terrible experience. I will wait. And I waited for three days. I didn't rape her because if I had done that, that would have been rape. I waited until she grew where her mind could carry it. Then we went. Every time I have issues of lust, I tell my wife, I have never hidden one till date. I tell her, Haba, is she not my wife? But I tell her, all is not well. There's something going on. There are many virgins. Maybe you should title this message, there are many virgins. There are many. Many. And if you are not one, build a wall. As you go, build a wall. Can we pray for the body of Christ now before my father comes up? The Lord, please read us of these impurities. Read us of this nonsense going on in our midst. A brother latching on a sister. A sister latching on a pastor. A pastor latching on a vulnerable people. That God will cry today, deliver the body of Christ. Deliver us. Deliver us as a people. Ah!